Uh, has done two lovely demos that we were going to be releasing uh, this next month. And so we thought it'd be fun to do just like a real quick impromptu uh, interview on, on YouTube Live just so we can get to know her and get everyone excited about what she painted and um, just talk about uh, what, what she thinks about, you know, some of her influences and that kind of stuff. So, um, so I guess the first thing is, is like what we, what was the subject matter? What did we paint um, this time? In the first one we painted this poor dead duck. Uh, <laughs> in the second one we did kind of a winter melon and some squashes and stuff. Um, so y'all went over to um, like the Asian market that we mm -hmm. have here in town and we were just like looking for really cool items. Yeah, and Michael found this cool duck. Yeah. And I've always wanted to paint a duck, so that was a very nice coincidence. Man, uh, and did an incredible, incredible job. I watched the whole thing. I was, I was working on the cameras with her, and um, it was just unbelievable. So what, what's your method usually when you're painting? Um, uh, usually these? I like to start kind of with the background mm -hmm. and get like a general like composition going and kind of like cut down into the shape, kind of like sculpture mm -hmm. where you're like cutting away at the marble all mm -hmm. the way to the shape that I have. And then I kind of throw in the main colors that I see, kind of the main impression, mm -hmm. and then kind of work from there, keep cutting in like smaller and adjusting the angles. And I work kind of like in a site size method. Okay. But I'm happy to like get out of that if I need to. So where did you uh, study for a lot of your time? Okay. Yeah. Uh, first I was at Savannah College of Art and Design. And I had a really nice professor there who sent me to Florence. Mm. So I was at Angel Academy for uh, six months, and then I was at Florence Academy for the four years. Right. And I went to Sweden for a while, Florence Academy Sweden. And then after that, I was at Audner Drum School wow. for a while. That's incredible. What do you feel like, kind of like, did you pick up from all those things that kind of are incorporated into your okay. style and your painting method? Do you have? I think like uh, all the schools, you definitely can pick up a lot of different things. So like Angel Academy kind of teaches you how to turn forms back into space. Mm. And at Savannah, my professor was like very big about kind of constructing things. So like finding big lines that are like going through things, so structure. And then mm -hmm. Florence Academy was very much about like shapes and kind of looking for like, uh, more kind of like structure of thing like outside contours and mm -hmm. stuff and more like graphic image and uh, definitely like light effect I learned a lot from Florence Academy and then mm. I thought from Audner Gym you kind of learn like I don't know it's just very inspiring like learning to paint like bigger things or like just not being afraid to do yeah. kind of crazy stuff yeah man it was a lot of time in abroad we were we were talking about that earlier how how much time you almost feel more European these days than you do American. <laughs> yeah, well I was like over there for about seven years now, so wow. it's strange being back and a lot of my friends are still over there. Yeah. So we go back pretty often now. Yeah, that I've incredible. only been like living in America probably for the last year and a half. And you're originally from? From Colorado, mm -hmm. yeah. So I live in Denver now. How'd you get started? How'd you get started painting? Um, I think my mom was some kind, she was like advertising, so she was always kind of drawing, like she was very into drawing stuff by hand, so she was like old school advertising, so she had all the materials and stuff, mm -hmm. so when I was growing up, they would let me use any of the art materials, and I remember like my parents would always, they were always like happy to buy me art stuff, like mm -hmm. they wouldn't like buy me other like stupid toys and stuff, but they were like, okay, so if you want art stuff, we'll buy it for you. And so I just kind of got really into art because th there was always like supplies and it was always easy to kind of work. Man, I tell you, it's incredible when you have parents that are like really supportive yeah, of how, how helpful that is when you're on your sort of your journey. Yeah, they just oh. always made sure I had the right supplies and stuff. I mm -hmm. think that's super important. And my professor in Savannah was the same. He just always, like, if somebody didn't have, like, paper or pencil or anything, he would just be like, take mine, take mine. And I think just because of that, I, there was, like, a lot of opportunities that I almost didn't, like, draw or something. Mm -hmm. And he would be like, no, you, you just take my sketchbook, draw. Like, mm -hmm. And so I think it's very encouraging to just make sure people have at least, like, the basics. Yeah. 
when they want to work. <laughs> Were you there the, like the full four years at, at, um, at Savannah? No, just for a year and a half. Okay. So I did their foundations program, which was mostly drawing. Oh, okay. And then when I got into my painting major, it was pretty abstract. Mm. And I was like, not really into that. So yeah. my professor was like, I think there's a better place for you. That's really awesome that like somebody from one institution is like, yeah. you know, I think you should go to this institution because it's more in, in your field. Because yeah. to me, that's like they're really in it to help you find what yeah. you're trying to find, you know. Yeah. And um, I think it was like super like uh, generous of him, too, because he had taught me like everything he knew and like really invested in me and then mm -hmm. to let me like leave because I could have stayed like a lot of our other people kind of working with him stayed and he does like a uh, bigger church painting so like mm -hmm. murals for churches so they kind of stayed and helped him with that but with me he was like mm. like you can go like try and make it like go on yeah. buddy so what was his name uh his name was James Langley James and I think he had gone to Mims school oh okay. and the New York is it New York Academy mm -hmm. I don't know the one yeah New York Academy awesome Wow, really cool. What are, what are like some of the uh, people that you really look at um, when you're, what are some of your influences and uh, like, that, like really influenced your work? Living influences? Uh, both, living and past. Um, I like Michael Klein, he's great. <laughs> <laughs> he's a great pop right now. It's pretty awesome. Yeah, no, definitely. Actually, Michael Klein, I'm not gonna lie, was very inspiring when I was like a little. Nice. And um, I was like the wildest. And in school, they like, kind of force you to look at a lot of sergeants, which of course he's mm -hmm. great. So uh, I'm trying to think. I like Velasquez. I like Velasquez. Mm. And I like all of the Spanish painters uh, just because I like cool, like Goya and stuff, super cool, like, I don't know, kind of spooky stuff. And then lately I've been into the Russian painters because I was working a lot oh, with yeah. Russia. And there's like a lot of living painters in Russia who I think are like pretty good because mm -hmm. they kept the tradition going like uh, maybe because of the Soviet Union or whatever but they kind of missed that modern thing so mm -hmm. I find a lot of the painters there who are uh, working as painters like their parents were painters and their grandparents were painters so it's still very much a profession that's like passed down through the family wow that's and I awesome. think that keeps it very strong You've been spending a lot of time kind of in that area of the world mm -hmm. recently. Um, kind of tell us a, bit, a little bit about those experiences. Uh, Russia's super cool. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, I mean, Russians are so great. They're so, like, uh, hospitable people. Mm -hmm. They really took like, very nice care of us. Uh, they, like, drove us around. And also just in Russia, there's some very great art, like, very amazing museums. I think Hermitage has the biggest collection of Rembrandts and I was wow. just like oh my gosh I can't believe the paintings that they have here I've seen them in books like my whole life and the collection was just giant I think yeah. the Hermitage you can just I think it's like seven blocks long or something it's just like a giant palace oh, that you can grief. just walk and walk and walk yeah that's so, amazing yeah they have great art and I think the people really respect art there so what I found is Whenever we were painting on the streets, mm -hmm. people were so polite to us and they would just like come up, look at the painting and like be like, oh, very good. And, like they weren't, it's kind of like in America, people would come up and like, oh, my grandma's a painter and like yeah. ask you <laughs> like a million questions and stuff and just kind of bother you. They just want to chat. But in Russia, they were just like, wow, this, like they're just super respectful and that would made landscape painting there is so enjoyable. Wow, that's awesome. Yeah. That's really cool. So I would say you're probably a real direct painter. You, mm. you don't really paint in layers. Is there a reason why you paint uh, uh, that way? Um, I don't know. Like, does it fit uh, your personality? or? I think, well, Florence Academy kind of encouraged more of a direct painting. Even though we are working kind of over long periods, they would kind of have us repaint areas in a direct way. Mm -hmm. And I was interested in glazing when I started and stuff like that. But now, uh, after doing landscapes and stuff, I try to paint pretty directly just to help me go faster. Mm. Just because like things are changing outside so much, so you can't really plan kind of glazes. Mm -hmm. And also painting flowers, they die pretty fast. Yeah. So 
I mean, it's really cool if you can do glazes uh, in flower paintings, but you really have to like plan ahead, and like the mm -hmm. flower is probably going to be dead when you're doing those glazes <laughs> and stuff. That's true. So. Yeah, I run into that all the time. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, I don't know. Are we planning on taking any questions? If we are, uh, we're not. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, what? Did, tell me a little bit about your color palette then. Um, um, you know. I try to keep a pretty limited palette. So I have titanium white. I don't use lead white anymore. Like I would like to, but mm -hmm. I don't know. I just either forget or I don't know. It's not necessary for mm -hmm. me all the time. But I like its kind of effects. Mm -hmm. And then I use cadmium yellow, light, mm -hmm. uh, vermilion, alizarin crimson, ultramarine blue, burnt umber, and black. And so what do you think about the whole stigma on black that you hear sometimes? Because I know you paint a lot with, yeah, with black, black and it, it really, I, I, you, it influences a lot of your work. So. Yeah, I think as long as you're kind of responsible with the colors, it's okay. Even though I put like a ton of black, I'm like, yeah. <laughs> but I just kind of like the effect where it kind of makes the, it like really helps the values kind of pop out. Yeah. And. But when I landscape paint, I don't really use black, so it just kind of depends on the situation. Right. But also sometimes when I landscape paint, if it's like a gray day, it's kind of nice to use black. Yeah. So, Cools things off a, a yeah, bit. Yeah. I think I kind of just try to use the colors that are appropriate for what I'm looking at. Mm -hmm. So I'm always kind of changing stuff around. And I don't really, I don't know, there's people who are like super like anti-black or super mm -hmm. people who are like, I only use blue or people are like, I only use like a limited palette, no blue. Mm -hmm. And I'm just like, use whatever works yeah. for you. That's right. That's right. Or, yeah. Um, well, y'all, this is, uh, we w basically, we just wanted to give y'all a little taste of what uh, we're going to be releasing this next month. We were super honored having her here, yeah, and I mean, she been made some. It's such a pleasure. Man, it's so nice to meet everybody. It's I'm been fantastic, happy. and uh, you know, the work that she did when she was here is just incredible. You know, watching both products, basically, you're going to get to see two still lives, and how she approaches both of them, which have like a totally different sort of color effects, and she uses the same limited palette the whole time, same and so it's really brushes. cool to see like sort of a really warm painting, and then a very cool painting or cool objects in the painting that, you know, made something, made it really awesome. So, uh, check us out at info, uh, uh, if you want to email us, email us at info at eastokestudio.com if you have any questions about our products, and uh, it will be up next month. And uh, if you want to check out any of our other products, just go to eastoaksstudio.com. And um, until next time, thanks so much, thanks Rachel, so for much coming. For this has been a blast. Me. Thank you. So, it's been hopefully. so nice. It'll be first, first of many. So, all right, guys, take care. Bye. <laughs>